Let's talk about race. It can feel frustrating and enraging that American History X is still highly relevant today. Despite coming out decades ago, the movie depicts an attitude of racism that is still prevalent in many parts of the world. Some movies are considered a product of their time, but American History X is on another level. It's more like a product of the entire history of mankind, a history of war of imperialism and of superiority. I can't pretend to be an expert on sociology, but in this analysis, I'd like to think about ideas that the film presents and how that relates to what the scientific literature tells us about race. Eventually, we'll come to answer the question, is race real? So stick around and let's talk about American History X. Every night, thousands of these parasites stream across the border like some fucking pinata exploded. <laughs> Don't laugh. There's nothing funny going on here. This is about your life and mine. American History X was not the best reviewed movie at the time it was released, with critics saying it was exploitative, muddled, and overall a missed opportunity. But with time, the sentiment of the public towards this movie only improved. Even some critics in 1998 could see that it was an important movie for what it wanted to represent. Division, fear, oppression, not comfortable words to hear. And the movie is anything but comfortable. It is a brutal, violent movie that is difficult to watch, not just because of its subject matter, but because it's become more and more obvious how the problems in the film are still a problem today. There are many clear messages in the movie about how the idea of racial superiority leads to chaos. Many people have talked about the symbolism in the film before, so I won't spend too much time on them, but I want to go through color. The film is told either in black and white or in full color. The black and white scenes take place in the past with Derek Vineyard very much a white supremacist, seeing the world in extremes, as if everything was either black or white. The scenes in full color represent Derek's reform after his time in prison, where he learned the error of his ways and is open to seeing the different shades of people and ideas in the world. The camera work supports the extremes of cinematography as well, with several shots using a very shallow depth of field and some shots with an unusually wide-angled lens, representing the constant struggle between different ideologies. There is also a cyclical message in American History X. The film opens with a shot of waves, an unavoidable, constant repetition as waves keep flowing back and forth onto the shore. This represents a vicious cycle of misguided hate, leading to division and loss. Much like the waves, the characters in the film similarly incite and carry out repeated acts of violence against what they believe to be inferior invading minorities. But violence and hate begets more violence and hate. And despite Derek Vineyard's journey of redemption, his past of violence had ripple effects, ultimately culminating in the tragic and unnecessary death of his younger brother Danny. We don't know how Derek responded to this after the movie, but it is possible that the murder of his brother continued the vicious cycle of hate, as the movie ends once again with the cyclical image of waves. Everyone loses, and everyone will continue to lose. It's impossible not to see parallels between this and what's going on in the world at the time of recording. If you're watching this after 2020, I hope that the world you live in is one which is starting to hate less and that there has been progress in destroying the walls of systemic racism all over the world. The characters in American History X feel so much hate towards people who look different from them, due to a misguided force that has been ingrained in society over hundreds of years, the force of racism. Who do you hate, Danny? I hate anyone that isn't white Protestant. Why? They're a burden to the advancement of the white race. 
Some of them are right, I guess. To understand why racism exists, it might be helpful to look at why racists exist. To oversimplify, it started when the Europeans were undoubtedly the most powerful of the world's empires, with a thirst for knowledge and exploration, and the technology and weaponry to support it. Throughout their many travels around the world, they believed that the power they had made them naturally the finest of their kind. People from other regions who were different in terms of looks and culture didn't fit the narrative and were looked down upon and exploited. That's how the idea of race took its roots, by powerful people who categorized other people, people who just looked and sounded different. Racism is thus the prejudice or discrimination against these categories of people. Couple this with a fear of being knocked off your seat of power, and you have the recipe for decades and even centuries of racist oppression and dehumanization. The after effects of this are still being felt today in the form of systemic racism, as well as hate crimes like those seen in American History X. Many scholars, scientists, and authors have covered these topics in way more depth, and one of those authors is British journalist Angela Sini. In her 2019 book Superior, Sini says race is at its heart the belief that we are born different, deep inside our bodies, perhaps even in character and intellect as well as in outward appearance. It's the notion that groups of people have certain innate qualities that not only are visible at the surface of their skins, but also run down into their innate capacities, that perhaps even help define the passage of progress, the success and failure of the nations our ancestors have come from. You can see this line of thinking demonstrated by Derek Vineyard and the other skinheads. In American History X, Derek's rage blinds him to the systemic racism in the country, as he confuses the crime rate of the so-called black communities with their innate capacity. To Derek, black people are just more suited to committing crimes, and this leads him to cite statistics that don't tell the full story. Yeah, but they're not offing each other in record numbers all over America. Look at the statistics, for Christ's sakes. It's one in every three black males is in some phase of the correctional system. Is that a coincidence, or do these people have, you know, like a racial commitment to crime? This is one of the most intense scenes in the movie, and going off topic slightly, it's also scary to think how Derek's delusion over police brutality is something you might still hear about in the United States today. Well, I, I did think that the police used their clubs rather excessively. Who are you to say what's excessive? I think it was totally appropriate. I think they're in a better position to make that judgment call than you are. In fact, we as society grant cops a certain amount of authority to make those calls because we acknowledge that, that their job is difficult and dangerous. You know, unfortunately, very few people like respect that and respect that authority. When it comes to race, the fact is many of us still talk about race and make race-based comments as if our differences are a universal truth. But do we actually know what race is? If I asked you to define race, would you be able to? More importantly, are we really that different from one another? Well, here are some hard facts and numbers. The human body is largely defined by our genes, from the number of feet that we have to the types of food we can digest. Humans today share 99.9% .9 of our genetic code. You could say that, on average, we are all 99.9% .9 similar. The remaining 0.1% encodes for our differences in skin color, eye color, and allergies, to name a few examples. So you might think that this 0.1% is where the difference is between the so-called races. Not really. To borrow another example from Angela Sini, in 1972, the geneticist Richard Lewontin divided the planet into seven groups of people based on traditional categories of race. And he found that most genetic variation is actually found within the populations rather than between them. This means that just because my friend is considered to be the same race as me, it doesn't mean we are biologically more alike. In other words, even though I look very different from my light-skinned British friends, I may have more in common with them compared to my Chinese Malaysian neighbor, who is of the same ethnicity as me. Now why is this the case? If two people look alike, shouldn't we be more biologically similar? The truth is, that's not always the case, and there is evidence that this has to do 
with migration. Most scientists agree that the origin of the human race is in Africa, and that as our ancestors migrated out and settled in various parts of the world, their genetic code changed over hundreds of years to adapt to their new surroundings. But the people living in their respective regions of the world didn't just stay there, they themselves migrated around the world, mixing and remixing with different people. Humankind doesn't fit into an arbitrary number of categories, instead we're more like a gradient of color, each geographical region fading seamlessly into the next. This forms the basis of why some Americans who identify as black have genes that indicate a European origin, and why even the white supremacists in American History X could ironically be hating on people who are more similar to them than they think. Has anything you've done made your life better? So here we are today, whenever that is for you. The question is, is race real? Well, no, but also yes. No, because biologically, we know that there is more genetic variation within a so-called race compared to between races. And yes, because race is an idea that is so embedded in our society, our culture, and the stories we tell ourselves that it almost becomes a reality. People who wanted a convenient, systematic way of classifying human beings also ended up fueling inequity, discrimination, and long-lasting generational pain on so many communities, while fostering misguided entitlement in others. Despite experts saying that race is a social construct, the truth is there are still plenty of people who want to maintain the status quo, people who see a need to zoom in on differences like skin color to draw conclusions about racial superiority, people who believe that the suffering of minorities are of the minorities own doing. Even as someone who's considered a minority in my own country, I am also guilty of some of the above. So what do we do? Obviously, there needs to be aggressive policy reform, which unfortunately involves getting people who don't want change to change. There needs to be more discourse and less dismissal. Campaigns, talks, accurate representation in history books, the list goes on. At the end of the day, what we need in general is to educate people more about human behavior, taking something like human emotion and de-racializing it. In the 2017 book How to Be an Anti-Racist, author Ibram X. Candy writes, To be anti-racist is to de-racialize behavior, to remove the tattooed stereotype from every racialized body. Behavior is something humans do, not races do. This much is said in American History X, where we're told that people aren't born a racist, they're taught to be one. It's hard to look back and see the truth about people you love. I think if you asked Derek why it all went the way it did and where it all started, he'd still say it started when our father was murdered. <laughs> but the truth is, it started earlier. Even Derek Vineyard wasn't always a hateful human being, being driven to racism by the death of his father, whose racist ideas became an emotional anchor. Understanding this helps us to see how a lack of education leads to fear and hate, and why we need emotional support as well as educational support about how to think. Without it, I fear the events of American History X will continue to be self-perpetuating in real life, which is why I think the film serves as a warning of the challenge that we face. So if you ever have to speak about race or think about race, remember that this four-letter word has a deep and painful history, and that it means many different things to many different people. The meaning of race is whatever we tell ourselves it means, and right now, people all over the world are championing a definition involving equity, understanding, safety, and justice. And one day, I hope that we'll come to a point where a definition isn't needed at all.
Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. I hope you learned something new. I can't begin to imagine the difficulty that many communities are facing around the world. So share your thoughts about those issues in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel and I'll be back with another video soon. So until next time, have a great week ahead, maximum hype, and I'll see you next time.